This is Greer. He's a regular Minecraft player. He likes pranking his friends, flying around with his elytra, and generally goofing off. Oh, and he also started this. Hey, it's Mumbo! It's Mumbo! Oh! Wait, wait, hold on. You see, those were clips from the Life series, but to explain just how and why these are contenders for the best Minecraft servers ever, we have to go back. It's around the start of 2021, and Green is looking at the state of Minecraft YouTube. Everyone seems to be making pretty much the same stuff. Hardcore series, 100 days, and he's been making current craft videos for nearing on three years now. All his other series, build swap, tutorials, they've kind of died out, and Green has an idea. What if he made something new, something different, something that hasn't been done before? What if he introduced a completely new idea to the entire Minecraft YouTube space? And so Green came up with the SMP that started all of this. Third Life. The concept is pretty simple. A bunch of your favorite YouTubers trapped in a hardcore multiplayer server with a tiny world border who are only given three lives. On their first two lives, everything is normal. But on their third life, hence the name, they become hostile and have to try and kill every other player on the server. Last person standing wins. Third Life was extremely different for Green. I've never played any kind of hardcore series ever. And it was definitely a shot in the dark. The series had a bunch of new things for an audience that basically only watched Hermitcraft at that point. No mega builds, no huge projects, new people held a new server with different rules. Third Life was nothing like Hermitcraft. And that made it a risk. If it didn't pay off, Green would have spent all that time, as well as every other Third Life member's time, on a server that just didn't work. It was a gamble of epic proportions. This was not guaranteed to work at all. But it did. The server was a huge success, ending up with nearly 5 million views on the first video and starting one of Minecraft YouTube's most talked about series ever. It didn't even stop there though, because after the success of Third Life, the members took a break for making another SMP, Last Life, which arguably did even better than Third Life. It innovated on the premise, adding much more drama and tension to what was already one of the most emotionally charged series around, and even added Pearlescent Moon and Mumbo to the mix. Last Life was, in my opinion, the best Life series to date. And we'll get to why in just a second, because there has been one last series, Double Life. Now, why do I think Last Life was the best of the three? It's fairly simple, actually. Like I was saying, Last Life innovated on the Third Life concept and added just a few mechanics. The number of lives each player got at the start wasn't just three anymore, it was randomized from two to six, and you were able to give your life to another player if you wanted to, like trading. The last change is the most interesting one. Once every session, one or more random non-red players, people who would be friendly normally, would be selected to become the Boogeyman. The Boogeyman was the only person who knew who they were, and unless they could kill one of their fellow friendlies, one of their fellow yellow or green names by the end of the session, they would instantly become a red name the next time they logged up. Brutal. Um, hey Mumbo. Oh no I didn't, I don't know where it is, sorry I'll be right back. Are you the Boogeyman? No. Why? Why? I'm not the Boogeyman. Are you sure? I'm I mean, I'm the, I'm the boogie man. <laughs> <laughs> the reason this made Last Life so interesting, however, was because in the initial stage of Third Life, tension built up very slowly. With no one on red lives, there was no imminent danger, and the series was fairly normal. Whereas in Last Life, there was always that chance for a sudden twist to occur. There would always be some sort of reveal or betrayal every single episode. It guaranteed that every session had at least one interesting and drama-filled storyline that impacted the entire server as friends struggled with the idea of betraying their own to save themselves, and every non-Boogeyman player was basically playing Among Us while also being in the series. The tension, the reveals, and storylines that these mechanics added to Last Life made it the most enjoyable and memorable of the three series for me, especially with the addition of Mumbo and Pearl to spice it up even more. Look, while the sun's Love setting, it. it's quite oh cinematic gosh. really, to be honest oh. with you guys. Yeah, yeah it's the moment. It Do you want to kiss? Right. These Wait. Oh. Before we move on though, can we talk about how the naming of the series could not have been worse? Like, with the first one being Third Life, and the second one being Last Life, and the last one being Double Life, it's a mess. But all three of these series, when viewed together, could easily be considered as one of the best Minecraft content SPs of all time. They delivered on their premise superbly, performed extremely well, left an impact on their viewers, and didn't stick around longer than they needed to at all. They were never milked for views. So with all of that context, Let's talk about how it was done. 
You see, the people who played on the Life SMPs were all Grian's friends, which, thanks to the side of YouTube that Grian is on, meant that most, if not all of them, mainly played Minecraft in a very cooperative, wholesome manner. These were people that were begged to collab regularly and were usually pretty solitary and made content on their own or with a small group of friends. But because they made similar content to each other, they shared a huge amount of viewers but didn't make content on the same server. And so the member list alone drew interest because there were so many interactions and collaborations that people had been asking for for years. There were regular faces, of course, to help ease viewers in, and the fact that these people were friends made those collabs even more natural, made them live up to the standards of the viewers who had been hyping them up in their minds for years now. I'm sorry, Grin. I love your back. <laughs> that was an I odd thing to come why. into. <laughs> <laughs> even if that wasn't enough, these were YouTubers that you were used to seeing build fairy cottages and mega bases. The life series were ingenious because they took away everything that could have facilitated these types of playstyles. The normal friendships that we were used to turned into wary alliances, or conversely, bonds that would never break no matter what. The series had a much more serious and real kind of tone, emphasised even more by the scrappy nature of the homes and houses the members would live in, cobbled together with limited resources, a far cry from the luxurious megabases on servers like Hermitcraft or Empires. Just like the very premise of the life series, this was a breath of fresh air, something new, something different, something that didn't feel stale or played out even within these creative spaces, and it made the series unpredictable. Without the safety net and their limitless resources and insane gear, these players were much more fallible. They made mistakes and they behaved in ways that viewers had never seen before. Rian was pretty literally writing fanfiction for the viewers, putting their favourite scrunklies and scrimlows into situations that they would never normally get into and seeing how they would react. The series itself was great, but it always felt like you never knew what was just around the corner or who would reveal themselves as an evil mastermind. I am the Whoa! boogie! I no am the boogie! Way! No way! What? And that is where the next part of all of this comes in, because that was Etho, who's usually pretty down to earth, yelling into the mic with excitement as he gets a kill because of the inherent drama of the series, like Last Light for example. The actual emotion and excitement caused by the series is very real. It's not as much roleplay anymore, but it has that aspect, meaning that everyone from Joel, who barely engages in lore on the main lore server that he's a part of, to Ren, who is... well, Ren... Red winter is coming, me laddie. <laughs> what have I done? To get personally invested in the series, to get genuinely excited, which means that all the tension and drama that's built because of the series was, well, as real as it could be. It was true emotion, which obviously resonates with the viewers a lot more, since they're used to the true emotion of the creators in other videos. Sessions are also all recorded at the same time every week, with every member playing for the whole time, meaning that for the duration of that session, no one knows anything behind the scenes thanks to videos being posted early or late so they experience that same suspense with the audience and react naturally to it. They don't have to fake anything. You are... <gasps> no! I am the... The fact that the sessions are recorded once a week and together also means that every element is always in play. You can't wait for someone to log off and sneak into their base or lay a trap. They could always return at any point, making the act of, let's say, trapping someone else's base that much more interesting. If you do it alone, you run the risk of them coming back, but if you get a friend to distract them, your friend might betray you, and the inherent suspense of the series only grows with each new element. The fact that they were all recorded at the same time as well also means that it didn't die out like other SMPs might, where one or two players stop playing and slowly the SMP dies. Everyone is always playing. Recording for a fairly short but intense period of time altogether also meant that the release date for videos became something of a community event. Everyone drops what they're doing to go watch a new Last Life video and then discuss it afterwards. It was a weekly series that everyone was talking about. It's the model which works for huge networks like HBO and it got to the point where people who knew nothing about even Hermitcraft were convinced to watch it by just how interesting the discussion around it became. Adding on to that, because of how short and high intensity each session was, as well as how short the series themselves were, all the life series were extremely easy to binge. If you wanted to get into watching halfway through a season, it would usually take less than a few hours to get completely up to speed, less if you used one of the fantastic community recaps. But that last point might make you wonder though, if there's so little content, wouldn't people get bored in between episodes? Surely the series would be forgotten quickly if there was only one episode a week, and you'd be completely right. But there wasn't only one episode a week. Every single member would release an episode every week, right? Meaning that every week, 
five or six different episodes with a different viewpoint and a different story will be released. A concept that is so fascinating that it's basically the whole gimmick of the Knives Out movies. You see a set of events once with one bit of information and you build up your ideas and beliefs around that and then suddenly you are told a huge shocking piece of information that completely changes everything and see the same events again but in a completely different way. You might see a crucial kill taking place in the chat at the same point in five different episodes, influencing each episode's story uniquely, the only exception to this being that people in alliances tend to have similar videos. You could definitely catch up on the live series by only watching one perspective, but to fully experience all of it and experience all the emotional highs and lows, you'd have to watch more than one POV, meaning not only that everyone on the server got more views, but that there was that much more content and depth to the story that was being furthered each week. The Life series also weren't completely milked for content, like other SMPs could end up being. Even though they could have conceivably gone on for much longer, the creators inherently understood that keeping it short would mean that every episode mattered, that it would never feel like it was stale or getting too slow, that every moment felt like it had meaning. This is also helped even more by the fact that, well, no one on the server is insanely good at PvP, right? The people who were feared were usually those who had more knowledge of the game, people who could plan and theoretically outwit their opponents. But in terms of pure PvP skill, the lower skill level of basically the entire server, as opposed to, say, a server like Lifesteal SMP, meant that every fight could always change with a good crit or a lucky bowshot or just the element of surprise. Uh, what on earth? <laughs> That's what he meant. That is what he meant. The lack of access to an enchantment table furthered this, not only creating an interesting bargaining chip, as well as other things like sugarcane and sand in later series, and wildcard element, but ensuring that enchantments were hard to obtain and gear was almost always pretty bad. That, plus golden apples being banned, meant that even though some traps weren't completely lethal or 100% foolproof, they could still have a meaningful outcome and have the smarts of the trapper be paid off in a satisfying way. It meant that every single moment mattered. Every episode, every story beat, every character art, it all felt real, it all felt genuine, and it all felt necessary. There was no padding for longer videos. Everything was there for a reason and served its purpose beautifully. All these elements of a well thought out SMP and a tight knit group of beloved creators coming together to create what is, in my opinion, one of the best Minecraft SMPs of all time. And to win them, you'd have to be one of the very best with a plan that was completely foolproof. A plan that you can watch in its entirety over here. Subscribe.